Hi, this is Jim Bergman for MeasureQuick. Today I want to show you guys the new application we just made for the BlueVac Plus Professional Gauge Set. We're going to go through and show you how to pair the gauge up, how to operate the application, and some really cool things we can demonstrate as far as vacuum and characteristics of vacuum. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll turn on the gauge here. And you've got to let the LCD come all the way up. And the first thing we got to do here is we're going to turn on the Bluetooth. And you'll see the Bluetooth icon flashing there. And now the gauge is in pairing mode. So now we're going to go ahead and open up the BlueVac application. It'll take just a second to load up. And when it loads up, we're going to get the main display, which is our vacuum progress indicator. And uh, the first step we're going to do here is actually attach a gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and tap the gauge manager at the bottom. I'm going to pull down the scan. Because we've got that Bluetooth on, it's going to see what gauges are available. So you can see we got the BlueVac Pro 242 here. We're just going to hit save and connect. It's going to show that the device is activated. And in a second here, it's going to pull up about 760,000 microns, right? Because we're at atmospheric pressure. I can go ahead and hit close. And you can see it is displaying right now what we see on the gauge. So the gauge is showing high pressure, but high pressure is 760,000 microns. We can switch over to our graphing display. And you can see it's already started the plot. So as soon as we connect to the app and connect to the gauge, it's starting recording right away because it's going to walk us through a test. I'm going to go ahead and tap the settings button for just a minute. You can see that we can select the type of system. So these settings will change the, um, the depth and time of the vacuum. So if, in this case here, if we select the PoE oil, you can see it goes from 300 to 500. So vac target is 300 and we allow it to decay up to 500. If I go back to mineral oil, it's going to have a target now of 500 and a decay of 1,000. If I want to go ahead and uh, change any of these things, I can actually swipe and change. Uh, and pull that back and forth if I want to change that, but there's allows us to do different things. I also have my time below target times here. So both of these are set at one minute. So I'm going to hold the evacuation below 500 for a minute and I'm, I'm going to allow it to decay for a time of one minute. Typically these would be set for 10 minutes, but because we're doing the video for the sake of time, I'm allowing it to just do these processes a little bit faster. And also we have switches here that allow us to show our targets on our chart. Both of them I want to see. So I have this sort of set up the way I want right now. I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. It's going to confirm. You can see these are plotted. And because I've been talking for a few minutes, you know, this is about a minute here we've recorded, and I don't, don't really want that time there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and restart the recording. And then I'm going to go ahead and start up my vacuum pump. So I'm going to turn on the pump here. Pump started. I have the gas ballast closed. I got my valves open on my core tools. I just need to open up my pump. So we're pulling down right now. You can see that's coming down pretty quickly. If we go to our progress indicator here, you can see we're in our third stage of roughing vacuum and this is just stripping down and going around. And you can hear the pump now, it's getting into a deeper vacuum. Um, and so the pump's getting a little bit quieter. But at this point, we're making really good progress. We wanna go back to our graphical display, look at that, we can see that also. So we're gonna let this run for just a few minutes. I'm gonna show you a couple other interesting things on the, on the gauge here. Um, number one is uh, some of the icons here. This is the backlight, so we can control the backlight of the, of the vacuum gauge, and we can turn that off or on. And so I tap that blue, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn to the, uh, uh, the backlight on in the gauge, tap it again, it'll turn it off. This is our valve on here, and this valve is the isolation valve. So right now that's open because we're pulling a vacuum. If I tap that button, it's going to ask me if I want to confirm isolation so I can confirm or continue. I'm going to go ahead and cancel because I don't want to isolate it right now. When we isolate it, you'll see that change. This is our record button. This is our swap between our graph and our main gauge display. So you can see now we're in dehydrating mode. If we go back here, you can see we're in that yellow band right here. This is where we're pulling moisture out of the system. And then obviously our gauge manager here, which I can see my gauges. I'm connected to a gauge and I can just close this because right now I don't need that feature. So we're going to let this run for a few minutes, and uh, as it uh, makes additional progress, I'll show you what the next steps are. So we're down to about 591 microns here, and I'm just going to scroll through a couple other things on the iPad. If I tap on the side here, you can see our total elapsed time. We're at 3 minutes and 19 seconds. You can see our time below target test, which right now is at 1 minute. When that crosses the threshold of 500, it's going to start to count down, because we want to hold this below 500 microns for 1 minute in this test. We can see our ambient temperature is 66.2. We can see our pull-down rate, we're doing about 2.6 microns per second. We can see our saturation temperature of water, which is about negative 16. And we can see we're at 495 microns. It's still coming down here. 
So let this continue to pull. And we'll go back and we'll look at our elapsed time. So right now our time below target, we're at uh, 39 seconds, 37, and it's still holding below 500. We want to zoom in on that graph. Easily enough, we can do that. So you can see where the threshold, where it crossed. If I want to tap on the blue line, I can see any, any point on the graph with a, uh, what part of the vacuum we're in and what time it was in when it was there. If I tap anywhere on this line on the bottom here, that'll go away. You go ahead and reset the zoom. And we'll go back here real quick. And you can see in about nine seconds, it's going to prompt us to isolate the gauges from the system or isolate the core tools. So now it's held below the, the target for a period of one minute. I'm going to go ahead and close off my core tools. When I close off my core tools, you're always going to see a little bit of a uh, decay in the vacuum. If I zoom in there, you can see that we had that little bit of decay. But now at this point, it's in time and decay. So we're going to give that one minute. It's going to time up for one minute. And when it's been in decay for one minute, it's going to issue as a pass. Now it does have an algorithm in there that can calculate a fast pass. And that's just what happened right now. Because it's calculating the curve of the, of the gauge here. And I'm just going to finish and save here for a second. So here, if I want to zoom in on this a little bit, you can see this curve up here. This is where I close the core tools. A small amount of gas is usually trapped in the core tool. You can cycle those a few times to the evacuation if you want to, and that'll minimize that. You can see this curve here where we isolated it and where it's slowly approaching the 1,000 microns. It's going to hold that below uh, our decay time. So in one minute, there's no way it's going to hit this 1,000 micron target. So go ahead here, and we'll go back, and let's take a look at our, our, uh, our report. So now in records, you can see that the... Uh, the, the evacuation record we did is right here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some job site information. I'll go ahead and turn off the pump now. We don't need that running. And I can add in job site information. So I'll tap on customer name. This will allow you to use Siri. Jim Bergman. Hit done. So it, it takes it in. It's a little quicker if you don't like to type. If we want to add any notes in, we can also add notes. This was a test evacuation. All right. And again, if we need to edit anything, we can just go in and edit. And we'll get rid of that capital W. Hit check mark, and now we'll add notes to the job. I can share this. I can export it as a, CV, a CSV or PDF. So I'll go ahead and share it. Put it in mail. I'll just email it to myself. Hit send. And now that's off into the mail. Again, on this target here, I can tap and I can look at, at any section of the graph I want to look at. So if I want to look at my finishing vacuum, anything like that, I can do that. I can go back to my gauge manager and go back home here. We can see where, where we're at on this progress. But right now, everything's isolated. It's pretty well good to go. And you can see how that flattened right out, that curve flattened right out, meaning this is a really nice, dry, tight system. So that's, uh, that's pretty much gets us to the point where we can have an email report. A couple other things I want to show you here. Uh, you see this, see me go into records. It does store a record in here. You can also, if you want to edit that record, you can go up to the title and tap that. And uh, you can edit anything you want. So if I want to take the time off there, let's say. I can take the time off there. I can change the name of the report, uh, whatever I want to do, and then I can just save that. And as soon as I, it's already saved actually, uh, as soon as I change the title, it's saved. So if I go back here, you can see now it's just Jim Bergman and the timestamp is gone on there. Also with this record, um, if I want to share it again, I can share it again. If I want to email a, a C, CSV or PDF, I can do that. So this is a nice, so it's a permanent record. It holds it on there so you can have it for later if you want it. If we go into our, uh, our help screens. Help pulls in the Blueback manual, so you can have a full copy of the manual here. If there's any questions you have about the vacuum gauge, you can pull that up on your display. We also give you some uh, notes about the different processes of evacuation, so a deep evacuation, extended pull down, triple evacuation, and some notes on the importance of evacuation. 
These are uh, the icons you'll see on the, on the main display. So this is our roughing vacuum, and uh, this is where we're doing the most of our work, about 90% of our work, and then dehydrating, and then our finishing vacuum. And those, again, if you go back to the, to the home screen and look at the gauge, you'll see those are um, here along the side, sort of showing us where our progress is. We'll go back here again. We'll go into About, and again, we have some more information about the Blueback Pro, AccuTools and Measure Quick that you can take a look at. But it's just a, a lot of good information, real quick and handy to your, you got to access it, including our quick feed and the quick feed pulls in data from our articles and our blogs we've written. So you can go ahead and see why 500 microns isn't enough. It'll walk you through uh, different stages of vacuum and decay and what this all means if you want to study a little bit more about what the Blue Back does. The BlueVac Plus Professional provides us with a ton of information when paired with the application. It really documents a process that deserves documentation. There's nothing more important than a proper evacuation. When, the, when you start that air conditioning system up, the only thing you want to have in there is refrigerant and oil. We don't want any other contaminants like moisture or air because they're just going to cause long-term problems for us. And the gauge set allows us to actually document that that evacuation was done properly and we're going to assure a customer that they're going to see good longevity in their equipment. There's a, a ton of science here that you get the actually opportunity to see and start to understand. So we can see things in the vacuum like characteristics of moisture. We can see if we have problems with core tools. We can make sure that we're pulling down tight enough that we've given an ample time for dehydration. And it just really helps the user understand better what's happening in a vacuum. And vacuum, like I said, can be very, very frustrating if you don't have the information you need. So when you pair the blue vac up with the application, it's gonna just take your understanding of vacuum to a whole new level. Again, I really think you're gonna enjoy this product. This is Jim Bergman for BlueVac and MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.